All of these items that you see here are part of ID's 500 crore food empire. They're one of India's biggest food players who are giving giants like Haldiram, MTR, Nestle a run for their money. This is the story of a boy from a small village in Kerala who went on to disrupt India's 5,000 crore ready-to-cook industry and built a massive business. In this episode, we dive into three core strategies that ID has used to create a whole new category and become the ultimate batter king of India. In fact, today, they make 20 lakh idlis and 40 lakh dosas in a single day. The year is 2006. India is very different. Startup wave had not hit us. Our GDP per capita is one third of what it is today at roughly $800. Most of the Indians prefer cooking all the meals at home. And while companies like ITC, MTR, McCain, Wenki had entered the market with frozen foods, they were not relied 100% for everyday meals. But India was changing. We were witnessing a transition from homemade products to packaged products, be it dahis, pickles, noodles, or even atas for that matter. We were moving towards packaged goods. By the way, this is a time when ITC was the ultimate leader in the ready-to-cook space and had already launched Ashurvad in 2002 to contribute to this big wave of change. And at this time, Mustafa and his four cousins saw a big opportunity. But what's interesting about the story is that Mustafa did not have a conventional background that you and I could think of. He was born in a small village in Kerala called Chennalod. His father was a coolie. In fact, he went through those days when his family could not even afford three meals a single day. His childhood was super tough and he even tried dropping out of the school just to support his family financially. And despite all that, the same person somehow managed to do engineering from NIT and an executive MBA from IIM Bangalore. By 2006, he had a good, stable career. A career which most people from his village could only dream of. In 2005, his cousins who owned a small supermarket named Choice Stores in Indranagar saw a rising demand for idli dosa batter in Bangalore. Many mom and pop stores had these batters. But the problem was that the entire market was extremely commoditized. Also, the quality of this batter was terrible. It was sold in just unbranded polythene bags. That's when Mustafa and his cousin decided to address this gap in the market and started India's first fresh branded batter company, ID Fresh Foods. And they started with a really small scale, by the way, with just 50,000 rupees investment and with a 50 square feet kitchen. So now let's talk about what they really cracked in the market, starting with the major thing, which is trust. See, at the face value, the batter problem might just look simple, but it is actually not. They did not want it to be just another batter manufacturers. They wanted to do it with zero chemicals and zero preservatives. And during this time, they were competing with mixer grinders at home and bad quality batter that was available in the market. But Mustafa and his team did not want to compromise on quality no matter what. And to provide higher quality, they obviously had to charge a premium price. And that's when they understood the trust inside. Because see, India is a hyper price sensitive market. The only way you can convince a customer to pay even like 10% more is if you have a solid trust established with the customers. So while they were selling a kg of batter for like 40 rupees, rivals were doing it for 20 rupees or even less for the same quantity. And I'll tell you how they did it. The other players would get rice for rupees one from ration shops and later add tons of soda to make the batter fluffy. So while this batter was cheap, it was horrible quality. And this exactly became the mode of ID. They stuck to only using three ingredients in their factories, dal, rice, and fenugreek. In fact, they have a complete one hour factory video on their YouTube channel where they explain and walk you through this entire process. This kind of transparency is insane. So while other FMCG companies were experimenting on how to increase the shelf life, ID was only caring about serving their stuff fresh. In fact, the shelf life on their dosa batter is way less than other companies, just five days. And you must be wondering why FMCG companies want more shelf life. Let me explain this with an example. Just imagine that you are an FMCG giant like ITC and you're serving ready to cook food at an extremely wide scale and you want to cut down on wastage. And the wastage could be because of a lot of reasons, right? The retail store might not be getting the footfall or the product might not be placed correctly in the market to capture customers' attention. So the only option you have as an FMCG giant to avoid wastage is to add more preservatives and increase your product shelf life. This is exactly what ID never wanted to do. Their obsession with serving fresh became their biggest USP and I'll tell you how. See, South Indian cuisine is extremely popular in the country. To give you an idea, Sugi delivered 29 million dosas through its app last year. That's like 122 dosas per minute. 
See, you don't really care about how healthy or unhealthy your burger is, but you definitely care about how healthy or unhealthy the idli dosas are. Because dosas in Italy have a higher per week consumption rate, which means the health factor comes into the picture. So when customers finally had a healthy brand that was guaranteeing the freshness with zero preservatives for one of their favorite meals, it instantly clicked. Plus, ID believes in the depth and the principle of mastering one product first. I mean, they have only launched like 10 SKUs in the last 20 freaking years. No other FMCG company is this slow, but their gold is in this slowness. The idea was simple: build a truly great product with high quality when you want to enter a category, create a massively loyal set of customer, generate high organic word of mouth, become the market leaders, and then enter new categories. For comparison, if you go to ITC's website, you would see like 99 SKUs within just ready-to-cook category. This nailing one product insight became the foundation for their success. Limited SKUs led to higher quality, which eventually led to higher trust. Talking about trust, I have the ultimate free resource for you. This resource goes deep into four frameworks that companies like Cred, Zomato, and Tinder use to build trust with their users. This resource will teach you how to solve for trust. all across user journeys so whether it's solving for trust before the user discovers the product to them making their first purchase with you to solving for users who are not doing a repeat purchase and to solving for the average order value we have literally seen our members using these frameworks on their product roadmaps and pitching these frameworks to their leadership teams in the board meetings the link to this resource is in the description moving on to the second insight which is efficiency Think about it. How are they so cost efficient? See, at the fundamental level, the ID founders have wanted to grow this business very sustainably. In fact, they didn't even raise one single penny and had been bootstrapped for their first ten years, which is huge. And to give you an idea about their scale, they are present in forty-five plus cities with roughly forty thousand stores and even have international presence in countries like UAE and the US. Plus, seventy-one percent of their distribution comes through offline stores. And despite this huge scale, if you look at their wastage data, it is literally shocking. Because while the entire industry wastage average is around ten to twenty percent, their wastage average is like two percent. And they have done it despite being in the most challenging category of FMCG, which is fresh foods. The secret to crack this has been their amazing tech. In fact, they're not just a batter company, but a fresh food distribution company that runs on hardcore tech. See, ID follows a very unique zero inventory and daily replenishment model, which means that they don't store any inventory after production and deliver fresh foods to all these forty thousand stores daily. Before understanding on how they do it, let's first break down the steps that are part of the batter creation process because it's important. The first step is cleaning and washing the rice and dal. Second is soaking and grinding. Third is mixing. Fourth is fermentation, and the last is packaging. Now to do all of this at the factory on one single day and also deliver to retailers is extremely tough task. So what ID does here is extremely unique. Instead of doing everything in the factory itself, they divide their chain. So one half of the batter making process happens in factories, while the other happens in the transit. This is crazy. And now let's understand this with an example of Kochi. ID delivers to mom and pop shops in Kochi, but the nearest factory is not in Kochi, but 550 kilometers away in Bangalore. So to deliver to Kochi, they follow four steps in the Bangalore factory: that is cleaning, soaking, grinding, mixing, and packaging, and load the batch into cold storage truck. Now here's the interesting bit: they let the last step of the fermentation process happen during the truck's road trip in the cold storage, where they can control temperatures at about four to five degrees Celsius. So while the packets are on their way to Kochi, the fermentation process is taking place simultaneously. This is absolute genius. In addition to this, they also use algorithms, AI, machine learning, and deep learning in their business to forecast demands and procurement. They have even geotagged and geofenced each store so that they can analyze everything in detail, be it the route of their shipments, be it the timings of shipments, or be it each store's data. They analyze everything. This helps them to plan for best routes, make sure that the customer finds the freshest products in the store, and also to forecast demand. Finally the third core thing that they have cracked beautifully is every FMCG brand's cornerstone brand communication. See ID has been very rigid and firm with their values to serve high quality fresh food. So while you must have seen other FMCG companies spending tons of money on getting the best celebrities, you won't see ID doing that. 
they use associations and imageries of their core icps in their ads so in their ads you would see mothers children's and grandparents and id being shown as a core part of their daily eating habits the idea is to associate safety higher quality and trust with their core audience in fact they also do some of the most out of the box campaigns to increase the word of mouth for the brand in 2006 they set up 37 trust shops These shops were basically regular shops which had a vending machine with products inside but the only little difference was there was no cashier no cameras and no security a customer would basically pick whatever they like and would deposit the money in the piggy bank with no one watching and the idea behind this was simple to establish trust with the customer so while the first campaign was a hit the second one just took the brand's trust to another level altogether In 2020, COVID had hit and times were difficult. Plus many shops were closed or even apps were not delivering to your house. So during this time, ID launched a van service that would go to 47 locations in Mumbai, park the car there and leave it open for the customers to pick whatever they want. Again, there was no cashier or anyone who was checking if customers were paying or not. Mustafa and his cousins understood this massive insight that trust creates trust. So the quickest way to ask customers to trust them was trusting the customers first. And in starting, while many people picked items without even paying, this reduced significantly throughout their campaign. And not only this, they cracked the great word of mouth through some of the most interesting utility-driven innovations in their packaging. Here again, their thinking wins. For example, they understood the entire customer journey of how a person makes a vada and launched a very interesting squeeze and fry vada batter packaging for the batter. that makes it super convenient for the customers to give vada that famous donut like shape but in seconds and they have done similar things with other products as well for example their grated coconut comes in actual sealed coconut this is not an innovation muscle that they have developed but a muscle about caring for their customers by the way this packaging solves two things for them one is that it excites the customer and gets their attention on the shelf of the supermarket so if there's a grated coconut in a coconut packaging itself versus a grated coconut in some other packaging their brand stand out versus other giant competitors their packaging does the actual selling and second it creates a massive word of mouth among people think about it most people learned about id from a friend or relative who either bragged about the quality or the crazy clutter breaking packaging So these were the three key insights that took their brand from a 50 square feet kitchen to a 500 crore food empire.